Introducing the all-new Icy Willard 1970s Reinterpretation SPB 301 with a gorgeous glacier textured dial. And underneath that texture, there is a beautiful sunray effect. Dials like this are special and they elevate the watch. This dial is similar to the white birch from Grand Seiko for a lot less. 1350 USD. Now, some of you who saw the 63 MAS Blue Birch video, you might be wondering, why is the Willard 100 USD more? Same super hard coating, same movement, both have sapphires, and I confirmed it does not come with an extra strap. So the only difference I found was the bezel material is different, and I think the sapphire costs a little bit more to manufacture than the one on the 63 MAS because this one is single domed and has a huge bevel. It's a gorgeous sapphire crystal. Or maybe it could just be that Seiko knows people are willing to pay more for the Willard X chassis. Out of all the Seiko divers, this one, one of the most vintage feeling. It has such a unique personality. The only one I think tops it is the new 6105X, which has not been on the channel yet, but it is coming soon. So stay subscribed for that video. The Icy Willard is ISO rated at 200 meters thanks to its screw down crown, which comes in at 6.5 mils, easy to grip and operate. And out of the trilogy of Seiko divers, the Willard one always screws down perfect and very smooth. Now let's do those measurements. The secret measurement comes in at 40.2. This watch is going to wear smaller than a 42 millimeter watch would normally wear. And the sapphire is 30.5. So that's what our eye sees. And that creates a big difference on how a watch wears. For example, my vintage Grand Seiko has a larger crystal and dial. So even though it's 36, it wears a lot larger. So I'm going to say this 42 will wear like a 40 on your wrist. So be wary of that. Now let's do the rest of the measurements. 42.5 millimeter in diameter. Thickness with that single dome sapphire, 13.2, not including that tsunami wave bump on the case back. Drilled lugs and a lug to lug of 46.4. The bezel insert is anodized aluminum with grooves all the way around. They've done that before on the Street Series Tuna and on a couple turtles. They confirmed to me it is anodized aluminum, not stainless steel like the 63 MAS and MM200. I think the process to make this is a little bit more involved. That could be a reason for the price. Now let's check out that bezel. The coin edge bezel has a gentle downwards taper and it looks beautiful and it is reminiscent of the vintage 6105. Now the bracelet. I'm going to knock the fact that we have male end links but it is completely solid. Pins and collars, two piece oyster style. Articulation isn't the best, but it should still be comfortable. Has a dive extension, four micro adjusts, signed Seiko fold over with a twin button release system. And of course, a fully milled clasp. And there is the case back with a special edition badging. Now the dial and hands. This dial is absolutely gorgeous. You can see the icy glacier texture throughout and there's a lot of dimension here because of the sunray effect and the texture working together to play with the light beautifully. Let's do the weight with all the links, 181 grams. It will feel substantial on your wrist. The movement, 6R35, 70 hours of power reserve, hack hand wind, automatic, 21.6 VPH, and wow, look at the rate, negative one, zero, we have a little bit of beat error at 0 0.2, amplitude decent, 260, and now plus three. Okay, let's do one more round. We're gonna do four rounds dial up and four rounds 12 down. Fourth and final round plus three. Okay, let's check her out 12 down now to see that positional variance. Amplitude did drop, 237. The beat error looks to be, yeah, it's perfect. All right, so it got better, 12 down. And the rate, negative two, negative two. Hmm, not bad. Amplitude is a little bit low though, but I've seen that before with this movement. So I don't think I'm concerned. 
And the fourth and final round, negative two. Oh, it just went to negative one. Okay, not bad. Okay, there is the Loom Shot, powerful Seiko Luma Bright, although it is thinly applied on the pressed indices. I'm gonna knock that, but it is better for durability. No indices falling off here. And there you can see the one on the chapter ring on the right of the date does look a little bit awkward. The white dial diver. There's a big market for that. And this one has a lot to like, but is it the best Willard X yet? That's a tough one. I think that title still belongs to the SPB 237 on the right of your screen right now. You can check out that video and let me know which one is better. I think they're different enough, but they both deserve top spot. So maybe I'll say a tie. And guys, if you're still here and you love watches, remember to subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you in the next one.